Welcome to the show, Coach. Well, I'm uh, delighted to have the opportunity to visit with you. It's uh, a lot of things going on in the world of college athletics, uh, particularly the newest uh, ruling about uh, the least up at Northwestern where uh, football players or athletes can join a union, of all things. Yes, sir, and I, I want to get to that in just a moment, but it, it's hard to believe I was looking over, getting ready for the show, and, and of course, I can remember your last day at the University of Georgia as athletic director, and it's hard to believe that's been almost a decade now. Yeah, it is. Uh, time goes by fast, uh, as we all say, and it is, uh, all those that are up in age know that it it seems to go faster the older you get. Yes, sir. So, yeah, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years uh, where uh, I had been at a place for 40 years. I was uh, 25 years as a football coach at Georgia, 25 years as the athletic director. Well, right away, a math person will say that's 50 years. But actually, I did both jobs for 10 years and didn't realize I had two jobs till I gave up one. In any event, I've been in uh, been at the University of Georgia actively for 40 years, either coaching or in administration. Yes, sir. And now that you, of course, have uh, 10 years have been outside the athletic director, as I look around and, and see all the things you're doing, uh, you and your wife are quite a far away from uh, just kind of enjoying the, the retirement life. Tell us what you've been doing since retirement. Well, I've probably been as busy as I've ever been, I guess, Living in a, a, a state where you've been as visible as I have, you can't really, yes, quote, sir. retire. But I don't want to do that anyway. But nevertheless, I do get asked to do a lot of things and uh, and uh, don't have quite the excuses I used to have. <laughs> but I enjoy it. It's, uh, it's different. Uh, uh, one thing that I've enjoyed, I've been uh, consulting with uh, Kennesaw State, a school just outside of Marietta, Georgia, yes, around sir. Atlanta that uh, next year we'll have almost 32,000 students. It's hard to imagine, but uh, they'll be starting a football program in 2015, so that's been uh, a uh, fun project. Uh, I have uh, also been involved uh, in the uh, Georgia Historical Society. I'm co-chairman of that e- uh, event, uh, a, a group that's uh, been in uh, uh, since uh, 1860 something uh, in existence, I've also uh, have a great love and affection for history. So I'm on the Civil War National Trust, and I'm involved in that quite a bit. And uh, I've also written some books. And I've written some papers, and I do some speaking. And so I've uh, I have been busy this year. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you, of course, your your final coaching season was in 1988, and uh, it seems to me that the game really has changed and evolved quite a bit since that time. I don't know if it's for the good or for the bad, and it's not just the game of football. It's all the things that surround it, whether it be social media, the the access by the media, all these things uh, have changed. Would you agree that it, that it's changed a lot since your time? And, and, and if so, how has the game changed, you think, the most? Well, yes, there have been a, a lot of changes. Uh, it's it's certainly much more sophisticated. Uh, by that, I mean uh, of offense and defense, as an example. Uh, certainly, passing is uh, is is more important than ever. But uh, I've always maintained it is important to have a balance. Uh, that in order to really be good as a team, you need to be good in every phase of the game. Uh, and uh, that is uh, still true today, uh, even though we have some that um, that have offenses that score a lot. Still, uh, I'm a strong believer. You got to play defense and you got to run the football. Yes, you got to do everything well, as well as uh, throw the football. And your kicking game has got to be sound. So those fundamentals will never change as the game gets uh, more sophisticated. Uh, the players, yes, it's a it's a, it's a different uh, generation. Uh, when you talk about social media, uh, that uh, that presents new issues and new challenges for coaches uh, never before. Uh, I saw it coming. It was part of my latter years as a coach and an athletic director, but uh, even more so uh, today as that is just a 
a vital part of their of their life, uh, where they're they're constantly uh, communicating with each other. Um, so that is a that is a big change for sure. Um, and uh, you've got uh, probably uh, more good athletes uh, than ever before. Uh, there's always been uh, a lot of them out there, but I think there are more of them. And with the limitations, that presents a better balance among schools. You've got a lot of good football teams, and you've got uh, more and more uh, football teams uh, being started in colleges uh, in the last uh, Oh, five or six or seven years, there's been over 40 schools that have started football. And I mentioned earlier that I have been doing consulting work at Kennesaw State, but that's just part of a trend in the state of Georgia. Just the last year or two, you've got Mercy University that started football. You've got Berry College up in North Georgia. Reinhardt College has started. And a few years ago, Georgia State started. And then within a few years, you've got... Uh, uh, Kennesaw State, and then down in uh, Mobile, you've got South Alabama that started, and uh, it's amazing the number of schools but it, uh, that have started football, but it does uh, provide those schools with a special benefit, a culture, a brand, so to speak, that nothing else in the university can quite give it like football can. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you, you made mention of it just a moment ago about the the recent ruling for the Northwestern players, and I want to ask you, do you think that's a good or a bad thing for college football? Well, I don't think it's good. I, I don't think that if it gets to the point that uh, they're able to unionize, which means that, uh, in fact, they are employees, the ramifications uh, for that will be unlimited. You don't know what will happen from school to school, from day to day. The questions that will arise uh, about uh, collective bargaining or questions arise if they're employees, can they be fired? Uh, you can go on and on. It would be uh, unlimited as to the issues that will be brought up if that ever happens. I'm not sure that it will It'd be a long process before it does, but uh, suffice it is to say that it would it would uh, uh, provide uh, challenges uh, unknown ever in, in the history of the of the of, of, of intercollegiate athletics. Uh, suffice it is to say that uh, I'm glad that I came along when I did, and don't have to deal with that if that ever comes about. Yes, sir, and, and I'll say this, and I'll move on because I don't want to spend time on that. We've got a legendary coach like yourself on the phone, but you know, I think a lot of people see this and and they see the pay for play ideas and all this, and they really don't understand what it's going to do to college football and how it's going to change the landscape uh, if some of these things pass. I, I don't think it's a good thing either. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but you have to look at the long term success of of college football, and I don't think it's best. No, I don't either. I don't think it's uh, it's, it's good for the game. Uh, There's no telling. Some believe that it might end up uh, being that a lot of schools might uh, shut down and go to Ivy League type football, where you could only uh, recruit uh, people that are absolutely qualified to get in college. So, in a lot of ways, uh, it may end up hurting the players. So, again, the ramifications are unlimited as to uh, what might happen. Absolutely. Now, moving on, of course, you had a magnificent career where, uh, you know, just spanned so many years, 201 wins. Uh, I believe, if I can remember correct, all those years, I think you only had one losing season. Isn't that correct? Uh, yeah, we were five and six one year. Yes, That's right. Bare, yeah. bare, barely, <laughs> barely. Uh, but, but, of course, the best run of that probably was uh, 1980, starting in 1980 and really uh, going down to 1983. Uh, all four years were very good years where you only lost, you know, a total of uh, four games in those three years. And I want to talk to you specifically about that 1980 team. That's a team that will always be remembered as the team in the state of Georgia, I believe, uh, unless something miraculous happens here soon. Tell me how special it was to coach a group of guys like that. Yeah, it's sort of the ultimate of, uh, of coaching, I guess, is that you want to have a team that, uh, will be undefeated and will be the undisputed uh, national champions, and they certainly were. They did not lose a football game. Uh, we've had other teams that uh, some would argue were better, uh, maybe 
better offensively, better defensively. But the fact remains that uh, that this team uh, somehow found ways to win football games, uh, even though at times it wasn't very pretty. But yet, it, when the game was over, it was still victorious. Yes, sir. So that's the bottom line: is 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 to win. And this team in 1980 somehow, some way, won them all and were uh, declared uh, national champions, and therefore it remains the only undefeated, undisputed national champion uh, football team Georgia's ever had. Absolutely. We'll talk to you about one of those guys. Of course, I think there are three faces you always think of when you think Georgia football, and that is Coach Vince Dooley, Larry Munson, and, of course, the third one, and that's Herschel Walker. And uh, I want to ask you, at, how, how, at what moment, I mean, at some point in his career or in a game or in practice or somewhere, you had to just dawn on you. Maybe it was afterwards, but you just look and say, you know, I'm coaching the greatest player to ever play this game. Well, I think in the final analysis, he certainly was the best, um, I think, college running back yeah. that ever played the game. Uh, and he established that and earned that right early on. I didn't start him in the first game. But I was going to play him, and if he was that good, he would earn the right to be the starter, which he did. And by halftime, he was a starter, uh, and then had three uh, years of which he was a consensus uh, All-American, and, and I think the best running back. He uh, he had incredible speed, world-class speed. Uh, not only that, great strength, but what separated him uh, from, I think, others is his uh, uh, this incredible uh, mental toughness uh, and self-discipline. He probably today at 51 is the best conditioned 51-year-old person I know. Yes. Uh, it's amazing the condition that he's in. Uh, and uh, he combined those uh, three marvelous traits uh, to be such a great athlete and can do so many different things. Uh, and he ended up making the bobsled team in the Olympics. He ended up uh, uh, fighting in martial arts which I wondered about him sometime doing that, but he did it. <laughs> uh, and so, but he's uh, he's a, a, a rare individual that, that, that conducts himself uh, and, and with, in a wonderful way. Uh, Bobby is, I never had a player that was uh, easier to coach than him. Uh, he was, uh, he most always said the right thing. Uh, his uh, teammates respected him, the coaches respected him, and the opponents respected him. So, uh, yeah, he's one of a kind, and I'm very proud of him. Well, he's not only a, as you mentioned, not only a, um, you know, genetic freak, and I, I don't know any other way to say it. I mean, just the great, you know, one of the greatest athletes of any sport. But uh, he also carried himself in such a, a level of humility and things of that nature. You take a guy like me. I, I was born June 6, 1979. So I, I was born right before the, the first national championship and, and obviously didn't uh, didn't have a, a, a big understanding of his career at one, two, and three years old as a as a child. But, mm -hmm. of course, I, I later in my life went back and watched games and, and became addicted to this game. I'm not from Georgia. I'm from Alabama. Never lived in Georgia. Uh, but I ultimately named my son Walker just because I was such a big, Herschel Walker fan years after uh, he played the mm. game and uh, you know it really is uh, it, it's an amazing thing and it wasn't just him it was a great group, group of guys and looking at that I mean you've accomplished so much coach I mean you've got a resume that stacks against the best uh, you know the, the six SEC championships the national championship close on a couple other occasions and you look at all the SEC coach of the year award national coaches of the year award coach what are you most proud of in your career well <laughs> I think as you go along, uh, the things have become increasingly more important. I mean, you really are proud of the fact that you were able to survive and stay at one place a long time and raise a family in one place, which is hard to do in this day and time. Uh, we were fortunate to have done that, and all that was important. But as you go along, I guess the uh, what becomes increasingly more important is the relationship with your players, uh, the ones that uh, you've uh, in some way perhaps uh, influenced, hopefully in a positive way. Uh, and uh, that uh, remains special and becomes a real benefit in the long run of coaching uh, players that will come back and I always say two simple words, uh, thanks, coach. Uh, and uh, that is a special reward and becomes increasingly more important. Absolutely. And I only got one more question for you, but I do want to mention this. And, and, um, that is, of course, we had, uh, coach, uh, Bill Curry on the show, uh, 
few days ago, I believe it was on Monday, and uh, asked him a similar question, and he said a, a, a similar answer. And, and speaking of him, he's one of those guys you mentioned that was a part of the, the starting of the Georgia State program and uh, got that program off the ground. I believe he was there three years, maybe four. But uh, I asked him this question. I want to ask you again. If you were coaching today and you could only choose one current SEC player uh, to build your team around, who, who would you pick? <laughs> Who would I pick? I'd pick the guy we were just talking about, of course, uh, Dick Herschel. Yes, sir. Luther Walker. You know, it's interesting, just as an aside, that same year that we signed Herschel, who was the number one prospect in the country, we also signed another player who was the least sought-after prospect in the country in Division One, and his name was Terry Hogue. Oh, yes, and sir. Terry Hogue uh, ended up being a two-time consensus All-American. So that's the uh, the great part of uh, of this game is that it's all about production. Uh, Herschel was uh, had that on his back as a number one player, and he produced as a number one player. Here's another guy that nobody thought could produce, but ends up being a consensus All American twice and an academic All American three times. So that's the the beauty of the of the game, and uh, and one that I have a great affection for. We appreciate so much Coach Dooley being with us. Of course, Coach, one last thing. And and uh, when you were athletic director at Georgia, you hired uh, a pretty good football coach down there in Georgia now and Mark Rick. And I want to ask you before you go, what is it that you saw in Coach Rick that made you know he was going to be a good football coach? Well, I think a couple of things. You never know when you hire an assistant coach. But he came out of a, a terrific program. He was an integral part of a a program at Florida State during the decade of the 90s, arguably the best in the country. So he had a great background in coaching under Bobby Bowden. And uh, secondly, uh, everybody knew uh, Coach Rick as a person of character, a family man. And so uh, we knew that he would uh, represent the university in a first-class manner. So when you have that combination of a good coaching background and a man of good character, uh, your chances are pretty good that uh, that you've made a good hire, and it's turned out to be even better than I anticipated. Is one of the really great coaches in the country, and and certainly uh, one of the class acts in the country. Absolutely, Coach. We want to appreciate uh, tell you how much we appreciate you being with us. And not only were you a legendary coach on the field, you were also a, always known as a great man off the field. We appreciate all you've done for the SEC, and uh, it's really been an honor to talk with you today. Well, thank you. Uh, and I understand that they call you Dr. SEC. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I like that, and it's well done. So thanks for all the good work that you do. Thank you, sir. All right, blessings.